welcome friends once again to our NPTEL MOOC module on health economics. We are uh, presently covering uh, the economics of health system. This lecture is in continuation with the previous lecture. As I already mentioned, uh, we have been discussing um, the health system and uh, especially from the perspective of uh, revenue and uh, how you know, funds are actually generated for a better health system. We have mentioned that tax and uh, you know, social health insurance scheme considered to be the uh, better practices across the globe. And out of that, uh, in our previous lecture, we emphasized the social health insurance and the incidence or the burden who is sharing the burden of those social health insurance. Now, the assessment of all these things are made through the five important criteria. Uh, we have already discussed in the previous lecture on acceptability and uh, transparency. Also, we discussed stability. The stability of the you know sources of uh, insurance, especially for health insurance, we explained through demand and supply framework. We explained through marginal value of uh, labor and uh, supply of labor. This is what is the case where we said uh, that you know the implications uh, on the you know, employee or the employer is different. Worker or the employer is, is different. It depends on the elasticity of demand and supply. And in usual case, I mentioned that you know uh, the uh, elasticity of uh, uh, supply curve really matters and then the shift of the supply curve for the labor it is, is rarely the case unless there is a robust health system. Especially in the previous lecture we concluded with this uh, direction where we mentioned that when health system itself improved from point A to point B or in from one period to another period. So, the labor supply will be shifted towards right. And hence, uh, the contribution of the worker also increases, wherever the contribution of the employer actually decreases. And this is what is explained in this diagram once again. Uh, we not only explain the change of uh, the supply curve due to better health system, we also discuss the change due to, you know, the change in the marginal productivity of labor or due to the, or the change in the demand for labor is due to the cost of insurance. And our focus here is to understand whether the health system is stable due to these kind of changes. Yes, it is considered to be stable in another equilibrium point, we will reach at another equilibrium point for sure. However, the new uh, equilibrium point will be attained in between there are some distortions. Yes, this distortion is actually differentiating the impact to the different parties. The load you can easily see is different it is different to the worker and it is different to the employer and, and also the implication is is visible in terms of employment all right so this is what we already discussed in the previous lecture now we are discussing the third uh, you know criteria of measuring or understanding the you know insurance schemes health to, to define a better health system. Third one is called cost control. So, social health systems have uh, faster expenditure growth than tax funded you know system. We are trying to compare also which one is better in which perspective. Social health insurance system have faster expenditure growth uh, than tax funded you know system. In recent year the mix of financing mechanism within each system has become increasingly complex. A contract or third party payer model contains more pressures for a higher cost than an integrated one, both to provide uh, you know, more care per patient and to allow the prices of health sector resources to increase. Social insurance organizations have some role in suggesting increases in you know, premium rates also. And in the absence of competition for uh, you know customers, uh, they have little incentive to keep rates low. 
there are also reasons why contract models you know might reduce cost except from providing budgets to hospital to funding them on the basis of workload might be expected to introduce more information on cost and efficiency and this could reduce cost as well okay and um, so in new public uh, management especially for healthcare uh, reforms provision of services is separated uh, from funding and commissioning it is really difficult to conclude whether or not to uh, not the higher level of uh, resources allocated to the health sector as a whole in social insurance system is more or less allocatively efficient than the lower level associated with the tax based funding so it's really difficult in the to conclude higher prices encourage more resources to be uh, applied to health sector ends and this does have you know efficiency implication that are context specific uh, to example in these uh, two specific cases that uh, you know where you know doctors are highly paid relative to other professions uh, more young people may be expected to train uh, as doctors and an oversupply of doctors could develop since you know they are highly paid doctors may carry out you know activities undertaken by nurses in some countries suggesting a sub optimal skill mix in the sector so we are also you know discussing all those uh, possibilities to address uh, how the cost can be controlled now another criteria of measurement uh, of or assess these uh, schemes is to administrative cost so the which involves more uh, you know controls or administrative cost um, <clears throat> whether the the tax based or the social insurance cost based model collection of, collection of healthcare resources through the general tax system controls administrative cost by using an existing revenue generation mechanism for the social health insurance mechanism or administrative cost are influenced by the number of social health insurance funds that are established there are two papers we are citing at this moment by thomas settle 2006 and another work of them in 2010 um they discuss about uh, you know multiple social insurance fund that has led to additional you know uh, administrative cost of course and uh, it has uh, <clears throat> also risk um, you know system of uh, risk equalization and it is also required to equalize and to compensate fund that attracts more expensive members as well uh, in another paper they discuss about single buyer arrangements um, in that case they said you know sim- single buyer arrangements have operated even in the context of multiple social insurance funds <clears throat> and the most important example cited for this case is german so uh, another directions to this uh, you know administrative cost issue is through monopsony the monopsony buying status of the public body responsible for pooling and allocating tax resources also in the work of thomas 2010 uh, mentioned this this allows a higher level of control over what is provided and at what cost if it is of uh, if the power is with monops- monopsony power is attached with the public body so risk equalization system requires complex arrangements to avoid exploitations of low fools in the system to appropriately share risk across the insurance funds and can be expensive so you know to have a better uh, system uh, user incentive is must users incentives um, without that uh, uh, the efficiency is lost somewhere the way people pay for their medical treatment impacts their desire for medical care or their incentive to use medical services resources collected from individuals via tax or social health insurance mechanism involve prepayments which are made by individuals such as you know tax laws contribution rates etc and they are not linked to the use of health care see prepayment is already there but the relation is made after a certain time so uh, it is not really guaranteeing the strong you know incentive for the better quality care 
by removing the link uh, between payment for uh, healthcare and use of healthcare these two financing mechanism have uh, less influence on payments healthcare utilization decision then if the patient is required to pay for healthcare at the point of use so basically we are trying to say the point of use is is more guaranteed the quality than that of the prepayment okay you can check with prepayment and, and prepayment and point of payment in fact there is a risk of a moral hazard whereby people may you know change their behavior when not faced with uh, paying at the point of use so basically you know moral hazard problem tells that there might be over utilization of healthcare services when it is considered with prepayment okay and at the at the, when somebody is paying the fees there are different you know reflection of behavior so accordingly different models are designed now we are discussing equity equity is is also part of uh, the assessment equity issues arises from the division between what people pay for the healthcare and what they actually receive that payment may be through taxes and health insurance and now that's again uh, you know dependent on um, you know the ability to pay and uh, according to the need whether the you know delivery is is actually according to the need there is cross subsidization Uh, from richer people to poorer people as well uh, from healthier people to sick uh, people uh, and accordingly equity is addressed with a progressive payment and not only do richer people uh, pay more than the you know, poorer people but they pay higher proportion of their income relative to okay uh, you know lower income people for equity payment has focused on uh, adherence to the principle that payments in line with the ability to pay a progressive payment not only uh, do richer people pay more uh, than the other they also pay higher proportion of income to the other category the mix of taxes and the you know, structure of taxes determine how progressive and the total tax contributions are so accordingly the uh, we can uh, understand whether uh, high income category or the low income category is actually contributing better cross country uh, analysis shows that social health insurance systems are less progressive and in in practice then tax based systems so across countries work stop at all derive that actually this is less this is less you know social health insurance scheme system is less progressive than tax based system another criteria is called rationing of services the services that is rationed is is uh, through different uh, categories regardless of how funds for healthcare are raised certain rationing in the you know uh, rationing is made as per the priority of the access to guarantee the dealing and uh, guaranteeing the service uh, so that that is uh, either through public taxes or social insurance schemes so there are certain you know indicators of uh, the rationing especially setting the pattern of supply gatekeeping waiting list and queues okay uh, we will discuss one by one uh, price mechanism is considered to be you know um, uh, considered to be a poor allocator price mechanism is a poor allo allo allocator of resources in the health sector because you know maybe the other end of the section may be your the burden in most nation rationing is done through waiting list line ups gate keeping service planning user charges etc additionally also they interfere in the market to help the poor and hence there will be issues of equity as well uh, so setting the um, you know pattern of supply uh, and um, the <clears throat> supply pattern determines the uh, you know access cost and also uh, supply pattern label at which other rationing mechanism are applied is very important to discuss setting the supply pattern requires more you know difficult decisions in most healthcare system and uh, resources are insufficient to meet the you know vast range of valid requests that they must address under the tax based healthcare system of special in developing nations 
millions of women cannot access routine and uh, you know indisputably high priority health services such as uh, the ability to perform complex birth by cesarean section etc okay in developing nations all users uh, of resources have extremely high opportunity cost it is not easy uh, to allocate where uh, resources could be found to staff and equip uh, uh, no, operating uh, theatres in remote and sparse populated regions. Hence, such issues so poor decision making in terms of you know, uh, maintaining optimal financing levels and setting supply patterns. The pattern of social or tax finance health insurance should aim to reg uh, regulate demands uh, for health resources according to their marginal social value. Another category as part of uh, this uh, of rationing is called gatekeeping. Uh, in that case, referral system is mostly referred. Uh, the most tax finance system which we already discussed attempts to use gatekeeping that is through referral system to uh, you know, ration services to those with the highest priority demands. In UK particularly, the whole population should be registered on the list of a general practitioner that is GP. In all cases other than emergencies as the first point of contact with the health system. Whenever a case falls outside the GP or requires specialist facilities, the GP refer the patient to an appropriate provider. This process ensures that specialist and uh, referral services are rationed towards appropriate demands and needs should be made. Uh, two uh, findings from two different authors we have mentioned. Problem is that you know uh, in one author derived the clinical, economic and ethical implications of gatekeeping and the mechanism has worked imperfectly that is not perfectly functioning as I and the varying rates of referral and large number of patients is uh, identified in Wilkin and 1989 paper directly attend accident and emergency departments for minor complaints that could be dealt with by the GP. If the price mechanism were used, had it been with the price mechanism, patients own assessment of need for specialist services weighed against higher price, paying a generalist for advice and then paying services recommended. Uh, and in that case, you know, uh, and this involves even you know dual burden as well. So, not just for uh, you know assessment that need specialist services, but also the, the services uh, they are further paying and, and for first of all uh, generalist advice as well as paying for the services both way they require price to be paid. Hence, it is attached with a dual burden. Most patients made choices between specialists based on lay advice rather than professional advice. There are authors who have worked and uh, identified the problems especially in US case we have mentioned and uh, even in another paper identify the issue uh, in the context of Russian Federation. Waiting list is another way where um, uh, of rationing mechanism, uh, administered quick queues are important by which uh, patients refer to departments where unavailable services are listed and allocated the resources and it becomes available in order of registration on the list. Do this does not prioritize higher you know value demands. The highest value should be placed on the demand of the potential patient who has waited uh, you know for more time ok. So, it, it is actually not differentiating by uh, the price which I have already said. Uh, waiting list adopts prioritizing mechanism, emergency are prioritized and sometimes also numerical scaling or priorities proposed as discussed in this paper. Please note that all cases receiving the same weight on the list have the same priority and that weighting is a fair means of rationing among cases of equal social value. Even there are uh, some other observation like you know in terms of elasticity of demand, some estimates uh, found that it is of uh, the waiting time elasticity of demand is minus 0.5 for English character cataract patient in 2000. And another example uh, waiting list and the demand uh, and supply side approaches based in UK you can just follow on your own. Long waiting uh, list are uh, evidencing and uh, of themselves of poor resource 
allocation to the health sector and lessening within it. So, it also involves opportunity cost because of long waiting and uh, especially in the paper 2013 reviewed waiting list policies across 13 OECD countries. The most implemented policies uh, specifying maximum waiting time guarantees that is one of the solutions also for a better health system. The conditions for long waiting list are of uh, uh, low scientific interest okay. and uh, that may also distort the health system. The consultants also uh, use waiting list as a signal for their reputations uh, with, with patients and general practitioners creating the incentive to maintain them unnecessarily. Uh, there is inevitable inefficiency in using waiting list especially in the case of uh, chronic disease. By making elderly people wait for treatment it may be reducing the overall benefits associated with the given operation of treatment. So, waiting list and another one is called QEs. So, more the queue is there. Uh, so, expectation is, uh, is, is higher for waiting. The next rationing mechanism is due to QE in which patients physically wait to receive services. This is in fact called queue means they are physically waiting. And um, queue is rationed based on the patient's willingness to allocate time. This is dependent on the patient's willingness. There is a strong relationship between such willingness and the social value of the services. And one note here, here we have given that it is sometimes argued that higher va social value should be placed on the receipt of services by, by breadwinners as I already mentioned uh, with the case of willingness in case of QEs Mo or, or mothers whom the rest of the family rely. Such people are likely to place a higher value on time and be least able to spend long hours queuing. Physically waiting is considered to be a course for them. Uh, tries is, is another one the system of tries by which a nurse or doctor quickly assesses the emergency uh, situation and prioritize the, uh, the situation for the better health system and accordingly uh, the queues can be reduced. Inefficient and uh, inappropriate uh, rationing mechanism where uh, its use is often means of maximizing the efficiency with which health professional time is used rather than the ration services. In extreme emergency, gatekeeping, uh, sorry, waiting cannot uh, rationing, uh, cannot be a rationing mechanism, supply restraints are absolute, gatekeeping assumes critical importance when it is of extreme emergency. So, also pl please go through this example, especially in the emergency case, organ transplant, etc. Uh, we have discussed. Now, we last uh, couple of slides to understand the difference between rationing mechanism and social health insurance scheme. Social health insurance uh, tend to make uh, greater use of co-payments than do you know, tax funded system thereby relatively emphasizing private rather than social demand. Especially in Germany case out of pocket you know, payments grow significantly between 1995 and 2011 and as a uh, share of their total expenditure. The co-payments within the social health system are not the major type of out of pocket payments. They are only about uh, one seventh uh, of the total uh, you know, out of pocket spending. Co-payments have been also increasing Germany's health reform since 1990. This increases the role of price based uh, rationing when uh, you know we are uh, issues of co-payments. The effects of that are mitigated by the exemption of those under 18 years of age and uh, for most services pregnant women etc the poor the, and the people with substantial health needs. Uh, there are some other uh, example we have cited for French social health insurance scheme with 90 percent of the population is covered under BHI scheme okay? and that is uh, which protects them from these payments reducing the extent of price based rationing in this uh, BHI scheme. So, uh, an, another uh, uh, we have also mentioned in terms of equity implications and information related inefficiencies, please have a read. And we cited uh, 2015 paper of uh, Chevrolet uh, discussing about uh, additional co-payment co issues, please have a uh, look and I am sure uh, it will be understood to you. So, uh, now um, I am going to summarize all these things. 
and uh, clarify what is all we discuss. We try to discuss and assess the uh, social uh, tax and uh, social you know, insurance uh, mechanisms for a robust health system. We emphasize all those indicators. We try to derive uh, the, the differences. Many differences are in fact due to how the mechanisms have been implemented in different health systems. And some objective may be easier to achieve with one mechanism over another. Transparency in social health insurance cost control is easier with the tax mechanism. Tax mechanism concerns the lack of instrument to push funding towards appropriate levels. Weaknesses in the applications of rationing mechanism, difficulties in managing incentives that promote performance improvement, especially where public sector capacity is weak. So these are all we discuss, and um, you can um, in short uh, how health system can be you know uh, uh, improved, whether it is uh, price mechanism method, rationing method or through other approaches which different other reasoning method we discussed uh, so that out, private out of pocket expenditure could be lower and uh, uh, we also uh, compare uh, these two models and uh, there are many strengths and weaknesses we identified of both the model that is tax and uh, social health insurance mechanism in terms of their acceptability, transparency, stability and cost control. Resources are rationed to the highest priority and with the social welfare uh, maximizing target through some of the rationing uh, approaches through gatekeeping, setting supply of services, waiting list queues and others. Now in order to read since this is uh, theoretically discussed largely all the points, I think reading is must. Two readings we have cited, it will be useful. Uh, these are the latest two readings we have um, followed. In the next lecture, we will be discussing uh, on, on private financing mechanism and also on assessment of out of pocket uh, payment mechanism and BHI schemes, etc. With this, I should stop here. Looking forward to your participation. Thank you.